What's up, YouTube? Fino here with my friend Dan Rutkowski. Uh, we're going to be talking today about aggro's place in the meta. Did the bans maybe go too far affecting aggro? Uh, where can people find you, Dan? Introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, sure. I'm Fino said. I'm Dan Rutkowski. You can find me on Twitter at DiscoffDan. Uh, you can find my team at TCG Runaways on Twitter or YouTube. We have uh, some content up there. All right. Can you... Uh... Yeah. Tell me, does LSS just hate aggro, or do they just want to speed run <laughs> Hamilton getting Living Legend? It's a good question. Or do the players want to speed run it by continuing to play aggro? Perhaps the better question. I don't think aggro is targeted per se, but there's a lot to uncover there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like a lot of the bands over time feel like they've targeted aggro, like Plunder Run, Belittle, and things like that. Do you think? that i mean first of all do you think all these bands were necessary or at, at least the belittle band do you think that was necessary i think belittle was always going to be banned eventually um i definitely don't think it was necessary right now like i don't think it was problematic in any way like it has a deck building restriction lots of people have talked on that topic um i think what was bad about it is that blizzard and channel like frigid stayed around and Belittle was like the best tool that aggro decks had to combat those. Um, where like, I think like the ice decks got like a little percentage bump taken away in a couple matchups. Some of the aggro decks are just like not an option now. That's fair. Because Belittle is gone. Do you think that like... But it had to go eventually. Like that was always going to happen. Yeah, I, I think the card was super above rate. I, I also have been saying for a while that I don't really feel like it had much of a deck building restriction anymore. I think when it was first printed, there was the intent that it had a deck building restriction of you have to play bad cards in your deck. And then they've continually printed cards that meet its condition, but you would have played these cards anyways. Like you're just going to play Swarm and Gloom Veil. You're just going to play all the head jabs and Fi. Like you're not actually necessarily changing your deck too much when you add these cards to your deck sometimes. So like, yeah, it got easier for sure, but there's still a cost. Like, in Fi, we would have builds where it's like, we're trying Engulfing Flame Wave, and it's like, we have very few little targets now. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, a, it was still a trade-off you had to make, because um, a lot of the good attacks are going to be at like that four break point and that kind of mm -hmm. thing. But yeah, it definitely got to be less of a, a cost, I agree. Yeah. Do you think it's weird that because of all these changes, kind of fatigue came up as a, a big issue during Indie? Like, it was weird, like everyone went into Indie being like, Aggro's the meta, aggro's the meta, Briar, Briar, Briar. No one was really talking about Icelander. A lot of people seemed to think Oldham was dead, or maybe it was Copium that it was still around. And then through Swiss, it seemed like it was very aggro heavy. But then the, the cream was rising to the top of all the ice decks were just still pounding on all these aggro decks. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. I don't think the bands were really... At least Belittle, I don't think it was super related to Fatigue doing well. I think Fatigue was, like, pretty known. Like, it was pretty well talked about before that event. Um, maybe the bands caused people to test against it less, but I think the initial reaction was that, like, yeah, Alden just plays Fatigue now. Like, there's no win as well. Just Fatigue is, like, the, the main game plan. At least that's what I was hearing. So I think that wasn't a big thing. I think Belittle, like, helps against Fatigue. Like, especially for a deck like Fi, Belittle's, like, a huge power spike because... An extra card is like um, extra like safety against ice disruption. It's something you can bottom to E-Strike, all that good stuff. Um, just more pitch value. Um, but yeah, I don't think Belittle is like a huge factor against fatigue. Like it's certainly good. I don't think that alone was a big deal. I think the, the struggle for beating fatigue is that you have to, most decks need to dedicate like a lot of sideboard slots to beat it. And if you're doing that, you're sacking some other matchups, which you'll probably see more often. Do you think that still would have come out in force of the Fatigue decks if we didn't have the Banless update? Like, was that more of a Dynasty thing, maybe? I think it's an Oldham thing. Like, he just has all the tools you could ever want to, like, make that plan viable. Because, like, we saw Turtle Dash try that, right? And, like, it's very viable into some heroes. But you pair into a Fi, and it's like, you lose. Where Oldham has the tools to tackle pretty much everything and he got some extra healing cards too with 
I know one thing that seemed like was a big boon for them in the set was the the horn. Them being able to mm -hmm. disrupt all the setup decks and everything. Icelander lost some points, right? Into control. Or uh, fatigue. Yeah. Also, uh, Tree Frog Dash. That's like typically something that should beat it. Of, oh, you're trying to fatigue? Mm -hmm. I'll, no, no, no. I'm going to fatigue you. Or I'm going to set up the late game and you, <laughs> you can't play into this. But just the Remembrance Horn just makes it so you can't do that. Wait, so was that Fatigue Oldham actually beating uh, Tree Frog Dash? That I don't know. I didn't, I, that okay. I don't know. I just know that that, I, yeah, that's like a, a I, I would think Tree Frog Dash should have a, a good time there. Do you think they can still win down two items? Maybe more? I think some of them are playing double Remembrance. Don't quote me on that. I mean, don't they also just play Remembrance, right? Isn't it just like a Remembrance duel? I'm not sure. I, the, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's I mean, that's the whole point, right? Like to, to yeah, that's like an interesting, like, maybe to they combat go back and forth. that strategy, you need weird stuff like two Remembrance in the board. And, like, that. I think that's why it does so well, is that you have to put cards into your sideboard that aren't really useful in other places, usually. Mm. Yeah, that'd be a weird spot if, like, everyone just started, oh, they're playing this many Remembrance. Now we're just going to add that many plus one until everyone's just playing three. I, I mean, probably, right? <laughs> like... Do you think maybe... That's what the matchup depends on, Do you right? think maybe Remembrance is the problem, then? I have heard that set, V said. Probably. Kale, Kale called I it mean, originally, it's saying... It's such a weird thing. Remembrance needs to go, and everyone was just like, no, Kale, <laughs> stop. It's, like, hard to say what needs to go, though, right? It depends on, like, what the designers want the, like, metagame to look like, and, like, the, the health of the game, and, like, how fun the game is to play. Yeah, I guess, like, the first question is, like, is fatigue something that should exist in a healthy metagame? And if mm -hmm. not, should it be addressed? Uh, and is it is it aggro's job to even deal with it? Or is that an issue of our setup decks aren't good enough? Or is it all the above? Yeah. I think it's safe to say that fatigue should never be the dominant strategy, right? Like, I don't think anyone would disagree with that. Like, that's just unhealthy. That's unfun. I think if fatigue is like a strategy to beat certain heroes, um, that's fine. Um, like punishing decks that go too aggressive, like chain, perhaps. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's always going to be a thing, right? Like it's the, the core mechanic of the game means that that's a possibility. Like you just run out of cards eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think fatigue decks definitely need something to keep them in check. Um, and aggro decks can't at least currently do that against Oldham super well because his hero ability says aggro decks don't get to have five card hands, which means they can't, um, like it's been talked about a lot, yeah. like every extra card in an aggro deck is like exponential return, right? Um, so only having four card hands means you can't really consistently push through against that deck. And if they hit you with like a channel lake, now it's like, two turns where you're coming in inefficiently. It's tough for aggro to, to do that right now. Um, so yeah, I think it is more onto the setup decks to address that. But with the, <laughs> the good old horn, now they have to also be setup decks that have like a package to address fatigue decks that are targeting them. So it's, it's yeah, like I don't know, fatigue it's interesting. plus almost. It's like you need your setup deck to not only beat fatigue, yeah. but fatigue plus. I think my, my issue is more like how overtuned ice is in general. Mm -hmm. um, that's like preventing Oldham to be easily countered. Like it's very counterable, but I think the core issue is that you have to dedicate a lot to to be able to do so. And you also have to practice a lot. Like if you're not used to playing fatigue, it's rough. It's real rough. Yeah, and like all the ice decks like you just can't have any put a lot decks. of decisions on the opponent's part too, of like they have to play mm -hmm. A very tight game a lot of times into these ice decks and if they make a mistake or maybe their deck fumbles a bit on them it can be very punishing on top of that oh yeah they they naturally extend the game right so it's like more time for you to make a mistake more time for your deck to fail you exactly what you're saying it's also <laughs> exciting though to like watch the the fatigue deck get crushed though right like... <laughs> Like, I, I think it's awesome when, like, someone identifies that, like, this is the deck for this event, and it's doing really well. I think that's super cool. But then it's also, like, 
fatigue's kind of the natural enemy of most players. So like for this stream, people really like when it's like winning all day and then finally gets conquered. Like that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just can't be like the dominant thing that like. It's also awful for viewing a lot of the time. I don't know if it even is now, but yeah. like just mm -hmm. watching your opponent just block and just gain life every round. Like it, it doesn't seem great to view as a spectator. It's not a good look mm -hmm. for the game. No, I agree. I think when it's like fatigue all them into like Lexi, right? It's like you know what's gonna happen. They're just gonna run out of arrows, and you just have to sit there and wait until it happens. But if it's a deck like Dromai or like Chain back in the day or Briar who has like reasonable loops, um, it, it can be exciting. I think still because like you know the other deck has a plan, and like they're the whole game is like building to them getting to the point of like pushing through. Mm -hmm. So I think that can be okay. But I agree. When it's like a matchup where like you know the deck is just going to get fatigued and they really can't do anything about it, I think that's terrible. I think it's just like also not interesting watching one player play the whole game as a spectator. Like the other players just actually not doing anything. They're just blocking with three cards. Uh, I use blocking loosely, like maybe uh, Earth reacting or Ice reacting or playing Life Gain. Just in some form, preventing damage with their cards and then maybe pushing their hammer. That just isn't seem like engaging gameplay to watch like i could see that turn off a lot of people from being interested in playing the game or like oh that doesn't look interesting or fun to play against like i don't want to it's like sitting across from the mono blue counter deck with no win con it's like it's not <laughs> interesting yeah i mean i do think they yeah they should always have a win con which even the the version we saw at the call did have a a game plan to win the game right it's like second cycle your pulverize and your crippling crush. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's always going to exist. It's just like how strong is it at any given time. Do you think that's something that like the developers should address a bit more and like either give us more tools to answer it or have more of a heavy hand of removing it from the game? Or do you think it's it's fine and we should just adjust what we're doing and have the meta self correct? Yeah, I think the the more tools to deal with it, the better for sure. Yeah, I don't know. It, that's a tricky one. I'm not a game designer. <laughs> Like, whatever is the best thing, I'm good with it, and I'll play that, too. <laughs> um, but for, like, the health of the game, yeah, you just don't want it to, like... I think it's just it being dominant is, is the issue that can occur. So so you're fine with it existing in the game, and you don't think it's an issue? Just, like, as long as it's not, like, the forefront is fine? Yeah. Okay. No, as, as long as there's play into it, and, like, you can outplay it, I, I think like it's so like the counter play not is even important. problematic, but it's yes. Like I don't think Lexi should have to sit down against an old him and just be like, okay, I guess I'll go take a break. <laughs> just like that feeling. Of but I, I, honestly, I think even they there. they have they have a package they can run down to. Mm -hmm. Yes, but like even Lexi now has like a package they could run. I don't know. It's just one of those interesting dynamics. It's like Kano too, right? Like you got to dedicate some cards to Kano, or you, you're going to lose to that's it. That's a fair. That's and a fair a comparison. Just choose to lose to it. Right? Just choose not to play Arcane Barrier or something like that. Okay, then you accept that you lose to this. Yeah. It's, I, I like that comparison. I think I'd rather play against Fatigue all day because, like, at least I have like control over the game and like can try to outplay it. Where Kano is just like, okay, <laughs> let me know if I'm dead. I'll wait here. <laughs> Point flip the game. Well, we didn't really talk about like if we think Agro's maybe too weak right now. Okay. What do you think? I mean, we originally thought. Briar is probably, like, best deck in format. And it probably still is at least one of the top two or three best decks in format right now. So if it's one of the best decks in format, it's kind of weird to say that it's not good. Um, yeah, I think that it's in a weird spot where it's lacking tools to handle every scenario. Where it's kind of like what you were talking about with Ice. Uh, it feels like Ice maybe is a bit mm -hmm. overtuned. And I think part of it for me with Ice is it's like Ice has too many tools to deal with different scenarios... Are we racing? I have tools for that. Are we going to the long game? I have tools for that. Do I need to interact? I have tools for that. Are we going to this fatigue game? Mm -hmm. I have tools for that. It's like, <laughs> give me a scenario. I can deal with it. Um, where aggro, you're just enacting usually one straightforward game plan given a, a certain deck list. Sometimes there's a bit of variance to that. And sometimes you have other game plans you could play instead, but it's kind of it's kind of the aggro thing of like, well, if you do too many different game plans at the same time, it can make all of them weaker where you're better off just like going more all in on one. It'd be like trying to go for like a value uh, on hit by deck, but then also putting in the stubbies combo in the deck with all these like 
I'm just gonna go crazy things where it's like maybe these clash with each other. So like I th I think aggro's still very strong, uh, but the, that might just be that Briar is very strong, and then when that LLs, are we is is the rest of aggro still very strong? I feel like Viscerai's not in a great spot. Fies like dubious. Yeah, I will say Rosetta Thorn is like an extremely important tool against fatigue. Mm -hmm. Specifically. Yeah, evasive damage is so necessary against control decks. Yep. And it's split damage that like doesn't meet a breakpoint. Like it's inefficient to block two usually on either side of it. And they either do it twice or you're getting some chip, mm -hmm. right? But yeah, I don't think I don't think Agro is too weak either. I think like you said, Briar's like it's it's probably like the most broken deck. Like it does some insane things at times. Yeah, it's probably like in a vacuum um, the best deck. <sighs> I don't know how to answer that. Like, if you ignore the existence of other decks... I could agree with that. Like, we, we pretend Ice doesn't exist. It feels like... Oh, I see what in you're a vacuum. So, like, ignore... Other I think things. it's the most powerful deck. Yes. Doing yep. the most inherently Agreed. unfair things. I think Fi is plenty strong. I think what's important is that aggro decks are still pretty strong against setup decks. Um, and I guess I'm really just referring to Fi and Briar. Um... The other one's a bit too, but I think as long as they're still strong against setup decks, I think that's like the key to balance. Um, but I think the issue is that ice is just too strong. Like, I don't think aggro deck should be stronger because then we'll just be rolling each other's faces off all day. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they could be a little stronger. Like, I wouldn't mind if a little was back in five. That'd be fine. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think they're too weak. I think ice is too strong. And I can complain about ice for a while if you want. <laughs> Just Dan hates Complain ice. Complain and then probably play it at the next event. <laughs> <laughs> it's just too strong. Like I think not playing an ice hero is a mistake right now. Like it's so good that it makes Lexi playable. <laughs> 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 That's mostly a joke, but it's kinda true. I don't think she even uses that many ice cards. I think that if she now it is. I think she could reliably beat uh like old him fatigue. She's probably one of the best decks. See, that right there is the biggest issue. And we didn't hit on that yet. So my big issue with Ice, and like Oldham especially, is that like anytime a new set is coming out and I see these cool spoiler cards, I'm but like, oh man, ice? I wonder if this deck is any good. Look at this combo I can do with this like perfectly thought out resource curve. And it's like, oh wait, what if I have a Frostbite? <laughs> Guess I'll just not play the game. Like what? It's just, it's, I don't know. I think it's actually like a, a pretty big problem from that standpoint. Like, it just, like, locks so many decks and strategies out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I can agree with that. It's like it's like the new gatekeeper now that Prism's left of, uh, can you beat this? No, you're not a real deck. Mm -hmm. Can you beat one Frosty Boy? No? Goodbye. Yeah, and that's the other issue with aggro, right? Like, aggro decks are literally just math for the most part. Like, it's all about being efficient and, like, optimizing your output. And those decks are designed to use every resource because that's usually how you get maximum output from your cards. And where ice decks can do almost nothing. I mean, it's a little different now with that win as well, right? On the Oldham front. But like Icelander can just play a card and surprise your resource curve that you perfectly crafted is now different. Mm -hmm. um, so like now they're forced to play mediocre cards like Enlightened Strike. Like Enlightened Strike was really bad for a while. And now it's like, one of the best. Yeah, that was crazy. It went you down just need to this like flexibility instead. It went down to like twenty bucks or something like that for a while, where it was just like nobody wanted yeah, the card. Yeah, because most most aggro decks don't want to play Enlightened Strike. Like the the go again mode is actually terrible. Like it's just like two really bad rabbles, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're attacking for two and a half with go again twice. Where like the seven's fine. It's not like aggro decks don't want to be spending two cards just to present a seven, right? Mm -hmm. Like they can usually get a better return when they have a full hand, and then the draw card's always really good. Yeah, it like but, only feels good if you're like kind of cheating on the cost of it with like a Phoenix Flame or something like that. I mean, yes, and Lightning Strike was always good in Fi. I should, if if you're playing multiple Phoenix Flames, and Lightning Strike is very good. But also, Belittle made that happen, yeah. right? Like, just like whenever you're like playing. Now with we a don't card, have the extra Minimalism to get rid of. Yeah, you just mm -hmm. you you're cheating on it, where it's like, oh, there's just free now. It's a zero for yep. five or a zero for seven. So who knows? Maybe maybe Reptide is the answer. Maybe defense reactions is the key to beating fatigue. That feels unlikely. <laughs> or or he just Agreed. is the new fatigue deck. 
it's just too much what ice is right now, right? Like it it attacks your hand and it taxes you, where it's like and it does like instant speed doing that, right? It's just like it's just too many factors that like you can't the you just get got sometimes and it's just like there's no counterplay. I, I think like a big problem with that too is like the math behind it of theoretically if you're doing these things it should be below rate what you're doing. But then both weapons really overcompensated for that. The Winter's Whale turning a blue into four and a frostbite. That's like essentially worth five for a blue. Oh yeah. Same with Waning Moon. It's just it's it lets you pick up a lot of slack from playing these. Well, and frostbites are like such a variable value. Like sometimes they're worth like six. Like it's insane how much value you can sometimes get out of them. A well timed use of the shield. Just nope, you don't get to attack again. I block two or one and then also stop your next thing yeah so slag might needs to go at some point too but that's okay i wonder if it could have been that instead of winter's whale that would have been interesting but they don't want to touch legendaries which yeah. which i get any more hate on ice uh icelander has too much health <laughs> that's probably my last <laughs> the last thing i currently believe is in. it she has too much health or is it storm striders i think even without storm striders right because like her free turn is usually a four or three from arsenal and then three from the moon so like your opponent starts at seven less health than you mm -hmm. so 33 and she's at what 36 which is a buff because she gets to get built in go again and plus one in her attacks that's fair like if briar could start the game at 38 or 39 health i think she would choose to every time just if you're not scar that's an interesting thought so like the thing that yeah like the drawback to icelander in my opinion is like a buff um with how like she's currently built that's fair like obviously she doesn't want to be at 36 like 38 would be better but i don't know i, I think she's she's just over a tuned period and like the easiest fix i think would be knock down the health a little bit mm. without like making her change completely what's your thought on the setup decks and kind of where they're at right now i don't know i've really thought about setup decks is icelander a setup deck it it can pivot it, that's the i have a game plan for everything thing that's uh Oh, you're trying to fatigue me? Yeah. I'll be a, a setup deck now. I don't want to be a setup deck, but I will if you force me agreed, to. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Icelander is easy. I, despite the hate, I think Icelander is great, really strong. I find it fun to play. Mm. I think everyone should probably just be playing Icelander right now. Um, so there's like Dromai. I guess you could argue. Uh, yeah, Bolton. I mean, Dromai is interesting. I think Dromai is like always in a good spot. You should speak to Dromai more. You're the, you're the Dromai master compared to me but i think drama is pretty interesting like there's still a ton of different ways to build and play her um and i think she has reasonable matchups i, I like her matchup spread even fatigue all them right yeah like i think just don't play fi i think briar is probably slightly favored but like you're you're playing a game and i think it's like a super interesting yeah. game i think a lot of that matchup yeah. is like who went first or second yeah. i would agree hands line up like if the Briar draws hot, I mean, it's a Briar deck. If it draws hot, it wins. If it doesn't draw hot, it loses. It's just nature of Briar. But you, like, really force them into yeah, that. Yeah, I feel like the bands were a big win for Dromai. Yeah, I mm -hmm. thought she was really good into that meta. Which, like, the it seemed like everyone did, right? Because the meta we saw, like, Dromai was the second most played deck. It just didn't quite convert. I'm very curious what happened to a lot of the other Dromais there. Because, like, I know in my case... I just low rolled really hard for a couple games and just got knocked out from that. So like, I don't really know what the problem that other people were is running into because like I felt like that wasn't really indicative of the deck. That was just bad beats card games. I mean, there were a lot of aggro decks too. Like it could have just been pairings. It could have been skill difference. I don't know. She's a very hard deck to play. So like maybe there's a bit of that. Yeah. You know, Joan was in a good spot. I think like power level wise too like she's on par with what the ice decks are doing she's just not disrupting her opponent right it's like if she could give some frost bites with her dragons that'd be sick or some on hit effect that just like force interaction that's why like adding all the snatches and stuff was such a big deal for the deck because it's like any anything in the game to make your opponent in acknowledge that you played cards because everything else is just yep, raw numbers exactly. Yeah, I've, I've been, like, joking for a while that she needs, like, a pocket sand card. She needs, like, a, a draconic blizzard of sorts to, like, disrupt you attacking her dragons. Just the threat of it, right? Like, which, like, I don't like blizzard as a card, so I I don't know. That's maybe a bad take, but, like, it just feels like what she needs. Because right now it is just numbers, right? Like, even Snatch is more or less a number. It's just a scarier one. 
where the aggro decks can say, yeah, that's fine, but I'm going to kill this dragon and then draw a card when I kill this one. and then. I think it needs to be something that, like, you play and is an instant speed, because otherwise people are just going to get mad about the feels bad about committing into a dragon and then their card getting blanked. I think that'll lead to too many feels bad moments. Yeah, I don't think we should be blanking attacks. I, I meant more like attacks of sorts. Okay. I don't know. I, either way, I think Dromai's in a great spot still. Um, I feel like Dash has just always been pretty like mid. There's a lot of talk about Dash. Yeah, I don't know. Indie. I haven't played enough Dash to really... I, I, everyone just kept being really surprised yeah. that she wasn't anywhere at the top tables. She was just like, where'd Dash go? Everyone was talking about her. Like, oh, she's good into ice. Yeah, language. like Dash's job was to take care of the ice decks. Yep. <laughs> and Dash did not quite. Where what, where were you in our not time of need? Yeah, I mean, there's a fair amount played. Like, we, we looked at the meta report after. It's like, oh, what, what happened? I don't know. Yeah, I think Dash is, like, in a fine spot. It's just kind of, like, it's not as strong as other setup decks, I think. It's not as strong as other aggro decks. So it's kind of in between. But it does both really well. So that's kind of the appeal, I think. Yeah, I think it's, like, the part of the problem with that is you have to kind of pick one style over the other and if you kind of go in the middle you're kind of weak at doing both sometimes like i was running yep. into that problem when i was playing the kind of in the middle version it's like okay i had this item plan for guardian mm. and then i lost almost every single guardian because it just wasn't strong enough what do you think about bolton i played um a monarch draft last weekend and i played bolton and i will never play bolton again i think that bolton is like very close to being good but the line of close to being good it's not like oh like this deck is slowly getting better and it's like playable along the way i think it's one of those like this goes from being terrible to incredible overnight type of decks and it's just like missing something yeah, yeah i mean it's a combo deck right? um i mean even if so like you you can play it the combo way but you can also play it in a raiden mid-range style but it's just not good enough at that oh, i don't think it's even close yeah. It's, it's just not a good mid-range deck. Yeah. But, like... I think it's a lot of fun. Like, that was one of the first decks I played. I enjoyed that a lot. I uh, Most of my memories of Bolton are bullying them with Arclight Sentinels. So, <laughs> hard to, oh, hard sure. to have yep. a fair yep. uh, <laughs> shake on the power level of but, it. You know, I think setup, setup decks are, like, doing their job currently. Or, like, they're in the position to do their job, which is to keep fatigue in check. It just didn't quite happen at the calling as well i think that was everything except for the the fab cruise if you actually want to talk about that <laughs> i'm just excited that the fab cruise is real that's it's so insane um, apparently there's this fab <laughs> cruise coming up uh and you're you're maybe going to that you want to yep. you want to realm games yeah so what's what's that all about yeah i mean unsponsored like, so by the realm way. Games, unsponsored they're doing unsponsored yeah <laughs> i mean they deserve it right like they're they're doing a sick job like putting up big community events this year like i'm so excited to try and qualify for the 20k and all that just like having something to to work towards is, is always cool but they put on twitter like less than a week ago i think like just putting it out there would anyone be interested in a flesh and blood cruise it was like what i mean yes <laughs> but like what do you mean and then i think yesterday or the day before they said okay we're planning the cruise <laughs> here's here's what we're thinking stay tuned for updates and then the next day they said, okay, put down your deposit. This is happening. Oh, that's fast. It's like, okay. Um, they haven't announced, like, yeah. They haven't announced, like, what the event will be yet. It sounds like just one of the days there'll be maybe a brawl or something, like a 5K. Um, and then just cruising the rest. But, like, I don't know. I'm a big fan of cruises, so this is, like, kind of the dream. I've never been on a cruise. You're, you're making me want to go. No? It's fun. <laughs> All you can eat food all day. It's great. Say less. All right. When when, when is this? <laughs> <laughs> Say less food. It's early January next year. Speaking of which, I need. This is so wild. Like I have to be a part of that. I need I need some food guides for Baltimore. I gotta gotta find the people for the, with the food deets. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Let me know. <laughs> gotta get a new list. But yeah, that sounds super cool. I'm just excited about Flash of Blood now. Like every every spoiler that comes out, it's like, oh, I can't wait to to have some new stuff to figure out. And then I remember Alden and I get sad. <laughs> <laughs> All spoilers are just old him gets stronger. Because like people try to play these other decks that aren't Icelander or or Dromar. We don't do that here. <laughs> nope. <laughs> just play the ice deck. Easy peasy. All right. Well, yep. thanks for coming on, Dan. It was a pleasure talking to you. 
uh, yeah, that's again, fine. Uh, exactly. where can people find you? I'll have the links down below. Yeah, sure. Uh, at Disc Golf Dan on Twitter or TCG Runaways on Twitter or YouTube. Awesome. Thank you so much.